Well, welcome to uh, Stansford Park Garden Centre. And here, uh, Jonathan is bringing in some more fresh deliveries here on the Danish trolley. Some beautiful clematis and climbers. And we've got new stock coming in every day now. We certainly have. Uh, so it's uh, nearly a week since uh, we last had a look round the plant area. So we're going to have another look today, myself and uh, Jonathan, the plant area manager. Uh, let's take a closer look at some of the climbers. I want to have a look at some roses because I've noticed that the first of the David Austin roses are now flowering. So oh, let's yes, look. Right. Let's look at that's some right. uh, roses and just a few of the other plants that we've got around the garden centre now. So we've got some lovely clematis just come in, Tim. They're grown in the Cotswolds. This particular variety is an absolutely fabulous one. The President, uh, very yeah. well known one. Yeah, I've had a, a president in uh, my last house that I yep. had, and it was. It was absolutely gorgeous. Right. That, uh, that beautiful deep blue colour. The other, the other yeah. one, I think, is really nice this time of year is Josephine. Ah, right, yeah. It's a smaller, smaller flowered one, but absolutely yeah. fab, being the double. Yeah, those double flowers are just something a little bit different, That's right. but really nice. And the other one, which I love this time of year, which is just starting to flower, a little... Let's have a look. So oh, we've got right. a beautiful Mega Botanicum, okay. which is mainly grown for the bells, the yep. red bells on it, and also the variegated foliage. Okay, and is that is that hardy? It is it hardy. Is. It's okay. hardy down in this part of the country. Right, so you're fairly fairly confident that uh, people will keep that going yes. around this sort of uh, uh, Sussex, area. Hampshire border. Yeah. That's right. Brilliant. And then the only other one to mention are the Passifloras, which are the passion flowers. Ah, right, okay. And we should have some lovely white ones, which hopefully... Oh, I can see them. I can yeah. see them here. Right. I don't think you need to get that one out, Jonathan. Yep. We'll just have okay. a little look at the label yeah. there. Beautiful, yeah. Constant okay. Elliot is a beautiful one. Right. Again, hardy in this part of the world. Yeah, so some fantastic. And in yeah. fact, I can see a real, an old favourite there, Nelly Moser, isn't oh, it? Oh, yes. That's yeah. a lovely one. So that is another incredibly popular clematis. Well, for obvious reasons, really. Oh, beautiful that's right. flowers. That's right. Okay. So that's a little look at clematis. Now we're going to uh, take a look at some of the other things in the plant area. So the big thing that we're still selling a lot of at the moment is bedding. And we've got pot bedding and we've got cell grown bedding and we've got some bigger bedding and some unusual bedding. And I know Jonathan's with something at the moment which I've spotted, which is very unusual. Lechlade's Gorgon, which is a fuchsia, would you believe? So it's totally hardy in the UK or in this part of the world anyway. It's just such an unusual flower on it. If you uh, hadn't uh, told me that was a fuchsia, Jonathan, I, to be honest, wouldn't have believed no, you. But it right. does it does say fuchsia on the label, so I guess we do have to yep. believe you. Right. Uh, how, mu how much is one of those? 10.49. 10.49. So that is something a little bit different. Will it that flower through, through the whole of the summer, do you think? It will, it will certainly repeat flower. What okay. I will probably do, as soon as the flowers have actually finished, I'll cut it back hard to rejuvenate it. Right, so it give it a, a chop. And flush of flower. And in fact, that's quite a good tip for an awful lot of uh, flowering plants oh, than right. herbaceous if you yes. give them a really good chop back right. uh, they come back stronger in fact they always they used to call that the chelsea chop, chop. didn't they yeah, so right. um third week of may, may thereabouts great time to cut yep. things back that's hard right. and get a fresh yep. growth another lovely plant tim we've just got in the sarah bernhardt peonies which ah. are just they'll be out in about another week right maybe 10 days and that's, yep. a, that's a fabulous pink one. Isn't it lovely? It yeah. Is. No, peonies are a real favourite, aren't they? Yes, so they are. those are going to yeah. be absolutely gorgeous yes. as soon as you put them in the garden, that's really. Right. So at Stansted Park, we're a major stockist of the David Austin Rose Collection. We've got some fantastic uh, roses here available. And David Austin, it's a wonderful family business and one of the most well no the most famous breeder of roses in the world i would say so i'm going to sit here with jonathan and we're going to have a little discussion about how to get the best from your roses and perhaps some of our favorite roses so jonathan we're now sat we're, we're incredibly busy at the moment we aren't are. we you're yes. on the phone every day every non-stop day. Yep. to customers taking uh, home delivery orders yes. 
and so this must be the first time you've sat down at work for about a month. At least. So, and isn't it least. fantastic? It is. Um, what a lovely day. It's, it's beautiful, yep. isn't it? That's right. And, and we are, I can't help but put the advert in, we're here on our Aruba furniture, which is our best-selling uh, best furniture. Well, yes. It's brilliant, five-year guarantee, completely weatherproof and very comfortable. Yes. But that's, that's enough of furniture, because we're here to talk about yep. David Austin roses yes. and roses in general. Yep. So um, we've got some product here, but let's start by looking at a couple of our favourite roses. On, you start with your favourite Okay, one. so mine is obviously better than yours. Of course. But <laughs> I've got uh, an old fa a favourite here, Gertrude Jekyll. It's a beautiful rose. Fa uh, fabulous scent. Isn't it gorgeous? It is. And it is the scent, which you unfortunately can't get here, is absolutely to die for. It's beautiful. It and that is. is one of the things, David Austin is really well known for producing some of the best scented roses. Scented and disease resistant. Yep. So two really powerful That's right. reasons to buy one. Yes. And in fact, looking at this, uh, I think anybody would buy this, wouldn't they? And it's loaded with buds coming out here. It's a really beautiful, healthy rose. It's and so it's, it's just so tempting. So that is going to be my favourite as your, a rose your, in your, your garden. Your favourite's that one. Mine's a little bit more modern, called Darcy Vassal. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether you can see that, but it's an absolutely fabulous yeah. rose. Scent on it is very, very, very lovely. Yeah. I would say it's slightly fruity. Would you like to smell it? Well, see that's... what your thoughts right. are on it. Slightly fruity. Yeah, that's not. It is. It is nice. But yeah, that's yours. almost. As almost as good as Gertrude Jekyll, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. There we are. So, um, I, uh, we all have success and failure with certain mm -hmm. plants, yes. don't we? Do you know, I always struggle with clematis for some reason, mm -hmm. but roses, I have never failed to be successful with right. roses. I'll tell you why with the clematis, you're yeah. not planting them deep enough. Oh, do you think that's what it is? Yes. Okay. Ideally, with the clematis, you should plant them at least three to four inches deeper than the pot. Yeah. And also, always plant with root crap, ah, which is okay. a mycorrhizome, which right. I would recommend for all plants, especially roses. Okay. Well, well roses being the one. Yep, so that's right. Roses, yep. very, so, uh, very successful with those, but yes. some people have struggle, do struggle with them, don't they? They do, they yeah. do. So your best thing to do when you're planting rose is plant with mycorrhizome. Mm. Mycorrhizome, I don't know if you know much about it, Tim, but it's actually a fungus. Mm. Um, which actually creates a secondary root system on the plant, so it lives yeah. in a symbiotic relationship yes. with the plant. So what it actually does, it unlocks a lot of trace elements and minerals in the soil that the rose can't actually right. yep. get itself yeah. through its own root system. Okay. So we recommend that when you plant, you plant with mycorrhizome. Mm -hmm. Then the second season, we recommend that you plant you use um, after plant, which is a humate based plant yeah. food, but it's also got mycorrhizome in it, which reboots your root system. Right. So it re energizes okay. it. And humate, that means it's going to help the ground, your soil, to create that humus, that yes, sort of really right. lovely, crumbly, that's right. almost you think you could eat yes. the soil. Type that's right. Feel. So, so, yeah. what it, so, what it is, is that when you actually um, make your own garden compost, mm that once you actually rot it down, it becomes humus. Mm. When humus is put on the soil and it starts to decompose and rot down, it becomes humate, and the humates are what the plant actually takes in. Yeah. So this is humate-based. Yeah. So we are talking here about uh, helping your plants in a very natural way. Yes, that's right. So through, w when I was younger, uh, it was all about the chemicals. It yes, was grow right. more, it was NPK in very yep, controlled that's right. amount. That's right. And that's, that is great. It is. But I think the more modern way and the yes. way that we're looking to go in the future is to be just supporting nature. Yes. Because nature has got a oh, fantastic that's right. ability that's right. to do it all for itself. Right. And, I, and one of the things I do know, it was, it, it was described to me that mycorrhizal is like the plant Plants naturally obviously have a root structure. That's right. But actually, they don't have much of a fine root structure no, that's that right. brings in the nutrients that's right. and the moisture. Yes. And the mycorrhizal can actually be bigger and have have more it, length it, to it. Like than say, the, it doubles yeah. the root system in yeah. six so, to eight weeks. So your plant that might be under a little bit of stress has suddenly got all of this extra ability yep, to gain right. nutrients and that's moisture. Right. 
And I think that's one of the reasons they quite often say, when you plant something, it, they talk about planting shock, or they say, well, it'll sit, transplant sit, shock, yes. sit there for a year or that's something right. before it grows. That's right. But actually, that's the plant probably spending a year Making trying to roots. make roots, yes. build up its that's own right. system, that's right. and the root grow helps right. to, to get that happening right. in the first few weeks. And also, um, there has been a report um, recently that mycorrhizome will actually get into the plant at a molecular level mm. and will actually set up an immune system against yeah. rust and black spot. Yeah. So it's it's definitely a good product. That's right. It's relatively modest cost. I think this is a, te a ten pound nine ninety nine. Yes, that's right. And that's enough. You you you, you just put a scoop. There's a scoop. There's a scoop in there. There's it's a bit of that one, on the roof. One, one scoop per litre of compost. So it's that's enough for ten pounds. You've got enough to treat yep. maybe twenty plants. Um, so um, and particularly good with roses. The other thing uh, people used to talk a lot about rose sickness and it being difficult to plant a new rose in an area that had an old one. Yes. And I think you can completely forget about that as an you issue. You can do as long as you use the microizer. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Super. So um, no matter, we've, we've done all this wonderful stuff with our roses. We bought yep. these beautiful healthy roses, um, particularly mine. Uh, you. But you might still <laughs> get a little bit of um, green fly. You might get a little bit of black spot, etc. Mm -hmm. yes. And I just thought it was worth a mention for Plant Guard, Plant Guard yes. which is a completely natural product. It is. Uh, very good at protecting plants naturally uh, uh, against pest and disease, yes. um, which you can get in a little ready-to-use bottle, but we're talking about a really natural, sensible, safe product here, so much more yes. sustainable to actually buy it in a, uh, a concentrate pan. And then refill your spray. And refill, yeah, yep. so maybe you buy one of each, actually, yep. and then you just keep That's refilling, right. yes. uh, rather than constantly buying plastic bottles. Uh, and I also wanted to just mention um, a good pair of secateurs, uh, so when you're deadheading your roses, which will encourage more flowers. That's right. Uh, and uh, that we talked earlier about other things, the more you're deadheading is great. And a good pair of pruners, secateurs, really useful. Uh, and we recommend these Dalak ones, which I notice are also best buy with Gardener's World magazine mm -hmm. and Garden News magazine. Yep. Uh, and I think they're twenty seven ninety. Yep. Well, there's a whole range of them, but that's that's my favourite one, the standard bypass. They are really, really good, really good secateurs. Mm. The best thing of those is you can actually take them apart and sharpen them. There you go. So they're a good, yep. good product that that's hopefully right. you'll have for years and years. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so that's what we've got. Uh, just to talk about roses, we we have a huge range of the David Austin roses, but actually someone could visit their website, I guess, yes, that's and right. look at them, and yep. we probably probably got the one that you want if, if there's one you're yes. looking for. They are twenty four ninety nine and we've got a special offer two for forty. So at two for forty pounds you get two really stunning plants which will be in your garden for years and years to come. So please help yourself to some David Austin roses. So do you know this one Tim that um, it's called the Chinese foxglove? Okay. You treat it exactly the same as the English foxglove. And it does look very different. Again, it it's something does. a little bit different, a little bit That's interesting, right. but yes. not difficult to look after. No, it's not. So, like I say, you just treat it like a normal foxglove. Okay. Well, in my garden, that means that you just leave them to do their own thing, exactly. to be honest. Exactly. And what's that next to it? That's morning glory, isn't it? Ipimea, or yep. morning glory, yes. Okay, so that um, is, a, is a really beautiful, colourful annual climber. Yes, that's right, annual climber. Yeah. So you're not, you wouldn't expect that to get through the winter, would you, I don't no, think? No, but it will seed itself. Ah, so it'll seed itself and be coming back again that's next right. year. That's okay, right. fantastic, yeah. So we have got, really, a mix of the the real staples, the lovely standard bedding plants. Mm -hmm. In fact, we've yes. got a couple of trolleys here with, uh, with some rather nice looking pot geraniums here. Yes. Um, and we've also got something a little bit special as well. That's right. So we have got, as you say, a lovely mix of everything. Are all of these, uh, these are all nine centimetre pots, yes. aren't they? So yes, are, they, they are. are they all um, five for uh, their ten pounds Five or ten pounds, yes. Yeah, so that's a pretty pretty reasonable price, yes, I think, are. for are. sort of quality, individually grown yes. uh, plants. That's right. Yeah, super. Well, here's another favourite that uh, people do love in their gardens, and I can see that the the lilies here, Jonathan, are absolutely full of bud. Of bud. Yes, they are. 
So these are going to have some really lovely, big, showy flowers. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I like those. Um, will they come back again year after year, do you think, if you plant those? Do you, you will actually find that they will actually come back because they are actually a hardy. Right. So they're, they're a hardy, hardy. lily that yes, should come right. back year after year. That's right. And I can see they are three ninety nine. looking yes. at the price. So three ninety nine, three for ten pounds. All three for ten pounds. Well, that, that's that's perfect because you should always plant in groups of three or five, shouldn't you? That's right. Always an odd number. Always an odd number. For some reason, it just looks more natural, natural. when right. you plant them. Yes. Great. So three lilies for ten pounds. Yes.